This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. This week, I had a look at a class by the artist Veronica Salah with her class Magic Moths and Botanical Illustration using Procreate's Symmetry Tool. The first thing that I want to say about this class is that I learned so much about Procreate. I've always wondered how to use the Symmetry Tool on Procreate along with other basic tools like the Blending Tool and Clipping Moss tools that I never got around to experiment with and this class covers them so well. The project that she chose for this class was so much fun and it's the perfect way to get practicing with those tools. Veronica was so thorough with the steps and explanations that everything was so clear and approachable to follow and by the end of the class you'll have an awesome illustration to display. I certainly enjoyed watching and playing around with Procreate alongside this class and I hope you guys will too. Skillshare is completely ad-free so you get to really focus on learning a new skill without any distractions. New premium classes are launched each week so there's always something new to discover. If you guys are interested in this class or interested in picking up a new fun skill, the first thousand people to use the link in my description box will get a month free trial of Skillshare. Invest in yourself and your personal growth with Skillshare. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting grapes. This was requested by one of you a while back. I've never painted grapes before so I used a reference photo for this and hopefully the steps are clear enough for you to follow. So this is the main reference photo that I took the shapes of the grapes from since there are so many types of grapes. I like the cluster on the right so I'll be using that as the base shape even though I'll be adding bits and pieces. So it's not going to be exactly the same and I'm also going to combine this with another photo. With this one I like how the leaf is placed behind the grapes and I like the browning on the leaves as well so I'm going to try to incorporate that into my composition. I'll have a thumbnail of the reference image here but if you want to look at the original image I will also leave the link in my description box. So I'm going to begin by sketching out the outline. As you can see, I started out by drawing out the silhouette of the whole cluster. This way I have a better idea of how the grapes will be placed within the space of paper that I have. Once I'm okay with the spacing, I'm going to draw on the individual grapes. I first draw out the stem so I know where the grapes are going to grow out of and then I'm going to look at the reference image and I try to place the grapes in a similar way. However, if my grapes are not too accurate, say it's positioned with a slight difference or sized differently to the reference image, I will have more space or less space. But this doesn't need to be so accurate so I'll just be adding on more grapes or take off some of them to adjust to what I have on paper. This also applies to the portion of the reference image where the leaf is covering parts of the fruit on the top right corner. I'll also paint a leaf there but I don't want it to be as big so it doesn't look too abstract and I'll just be adjusting the position and adding fruits to fill in the space. To draw out the grapes which are overlapping each other, instead of just drawing part of the circle, I try to sketch the full circle instead, then erase the rest. This way the shape will be more round and accurate as we paint later. However, for some cases, if it's only a small portion of the grape that you can see, then I'll just draw the curve. It's mostly easier and more accurate though if you draw out the whole circle. I want to add leaves to this composition. I quite like the folded leaves in front from the reference picture. However, since you can't really see the shape, I want to make mine a bit smaller so you can see more of a leaf shape. And I also want to add the larger leaf at the back, just like the second reference image. It was a bit tricky for me to draw the leaf out because the shape is quite difficult to get it symmetrical and in an angle like that. I personally find it a bit easier if you draw out the basic shape of the leaf first, then add on the jagged edges later on. As you can see, I did a lot of erasing here. That's why I find it really important to sketch really lightly beforehand so you don't damage the paper. 
Next I'm going to go over the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Ultramarine Deep by Holbein, Permanent Yellow Deep by Holbein, Quinn Sienna by Daniel Smith, Permanent Green by Holbein, and Sap Green by Holbein. After I finished painting this, I actually came back to the painting again after a while and I realized I needed to add highlights, so this is Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White. Okay, so let's begin to paint. I'm going to paint the outer grapes first, where the colors are a bit more reddish purple or pink purple. Now for the red grapes, I just use Quinn Red in a thin consistency. I'm using a thin to medium consistency for most of the colors, just so I can layer on more colors later on for the details. For a more orangey color, I like to add Permanent Yellow Deep to the Quinn Red and I like to play around with the ratio to create different shades and I try to follow the reference image roughly. For the grips on the right, which I made up in my composition behind the smaller leaf, I tried to also make up the color according to the main colors which are shown in the reference. So for this area, I mostly painted using oranges and pinks. And at the bottom here where you see the green grape from the reference image, I use a mixture of permanent green with permanent yellow deep. And I varied the ratio so some parts are a bit more green and some parts are a bit more yellow. So just to recap on the color, since I'm going to be repeating the color mixtures a lot, for the red grapes, I just used Quinn Red. And for a more orangey mix, I added Permanent Yellow Deep into the Quinn Red. The more Permanent Yellow Deep, the more yellowish or orangey the color will be. And for the yellow green tone, I used Permanent Yellow Deep with Permanent Green. After I finish painting the outer grapes, which are a bit more pink, now I'm going to paint the purplish grapes. The basic mixture is just Quinn Red with Ultramarine Deep, but I'm going to play around with the ratio, so if I want a deeper purple color, which is a bit more blue, I would just add more Ultramarine Blue in the mix, and vice versa. For some of the grapes, you can see that the color in the middle is a bit lighter in comparison to the outer portion, so for that I like to use a thinner consistency of a ratio with more Quinn Red. And while everything is still wet, I try to add the darker purple color with more Ultramarine Deep on the outer portion. You can also paint this using a wet on wet approach, which is what I'm showing you right now. And that is to just wet the whole area with clean water and just paint on the wet surface and let the paint mingle with each other. For some of the grapes hidden at the back, I like to use a slightly thicker consistency of the same mix and this is just to remind myself that they're going to be in shadow as I layer them later on so it's a bit easier for me to create the depth. By the way, the brush that I'm using here is a synthetic brush by Giorgione, 
When I bought it, it was just called a detail brush, but it works like any other synthetic brush. This one just has slightly shorter bristles compared to what I usually use. I'm not too sure where you can get this though if you live say in the States since I've been getting a lot of questions about where I bought my brush. I know I use this brand a lot, but it's only because it's the cheapest that's available and I can easily get them online where I live. But I can assure you it works like any other synthetic brush like Reeves or Lyra. It's a synthetic nylon brush and those brushes are something that you can use all across the tutorials that I have on YouTube. But anyway, getting back to the painting, from here on everything is quite repetitive. I'm just going to paint all of the individual grapes and I'll get back to you guys once we're ready to paint the other elements. Next I'm going to paint the stem or the branch of the grapes. For this I used a mix of quinciana and permanent yellow deep to lighten the quinciana. And since it's very orangey, I added a bit of permanent green to mute the color slightly. I'm trying to follow the color in the reference, so I added a bit more yellow and green to the branches near the grapes and I used this to darken the color and paint it on the edges of some of the stems to refine them. Now I'm going to paint the first leaf. I'm going to use the same mix as before but with added yellow and permanent green and I tried to dot some of the colors in different ratio just for a bit of variation. As for the top portion of the leaf, I used the same mix but I added more sap green to darken it and separate the two sides and for some parts I also want to use a darker green so I added more sap green in the ratio with added ultramarine deep. Once I'm done with the base layer of the first leaf, I'm going to leave that to dry and move on to paint the next leaf. For this one, I want to use various green tones to paint the base color. I want to use the dark green for the parts closest to the grapes. And as I move towards the edge, I want to switch to a ratio that has more yellow and permanent green. Then as I get closer to the tip, I will follow up the green with just permanent yellow deep and while the surface is still wet, I also dot a bit of quinciana around the edges. I'm working on a dry surface here but the colors are blending together because while the surface is still wet, I just continue on with a different shade of green and yellow and brown. I'm painting fairly quickly because I don't want the edges to dry out and that is why they can also mingle with each other because the surface is still fairly damp. So you do have to work fairly quickly in order to get this effect. The left side of the leaf is not yellow on the reference photo but I felt like adding more yellow and brown for a bit more texture and character to the leaf so I'm just going to add it on for my personal interpretation. After this, I want to wait for the leaf to mostly be dry so I can paint on the details of the leaves like the veins and the ribs. I'm using the same dark green mix in a um, thin to medium consistency so the lines won't be too distinct. If you want the lines to blur out a little bit, then you want the paper to be a bit cold to the touch but mostly dry. But if you want the lines to have completely clean edges, then you would need to dry off the surface completely. On the top section of the leaf, you can see that my paper was still more damp than the leaf at the bottom. That's why the lines are a bit more fuzzy. 
Now I'm going to go back to the grapes. As you can see, the grapes are very far apart from each other. So I'm going to fill in the space with a dark purple color. This can be a bit more blue or a bit more red, depending on the color that you choose. But I'm just going to fill in the spaces with more circles. After that, I'm going to start painting the second layer. I'm looking at the reference closely and I try to add on the slightly darker values according to the reference image that I see. So for the grapes in the middle here, the darker more vivid colors are somewhat in the middle. It's sort of looking like a target but it has soft edges. So I use the clean damp brush to soften those edges. The color mixture of the second layer is basically the same as the first layer depending on the color or the hue that you need. Most of the grapes will be a bluish purple but some will be pinkish purple and on the outer edges I try to make them more pink and orange. This just depends on the composition that you have and I also try to take inspiration from the reference image at the same time. I'm going to add the second layer for all of the grapes now, so I'll get back to you once I'm ready to move on to the next step. Once some of the second layer of the grapes have dried off, you can even add a third layer. I try to use a medium consistency or a thin consistency when adding the layers because I don't want the color to suddenly be too strong. And if some of the colors dry out too pale, then I'm just going to keep on adding the layers. But as you can see, after I've painted most of the grapes here, the flat circles now look more three-dimensional. I've left out the outer portion of the grapes in the composition because as you can see from the reference image, the light is shining directly through it from the back and that way you can sort of see what's inside of the grape a little bit. There's a bit of a seed or the flesh of the grapes. So I'm going to try to depict that by adding a darker color right in the middle. I try to brighten the color first and while the surface is still a bit damp, I use a vibrant version of the colors with minimum amount of contamination to make the color nice and vibrant and I add on those fleshy areas in the middle. Every single grape does not have to look exactly the same as the reference image. I'm just taking the essence of it and if I made an extra grape or two, I tried to make up my own version according to what I see on the reference image to help me visualize the translucency of certain grapes. With this said, once you get the idea of how you want to form each individual grapes, and the translucent ones on the outer edges, you can also be a bit more flexible with the hues that you choose. This is why I also made up some with brighter colors, ones with more greens or more oranges. Once I finish painting on the form of the grapes, here I'm adding a thin consistency of the same dominant color of each individual grapes. And this is just to add uneven coloration. I don't want to do too much of this though, only on certain ones which looks a bit too smooth and mostly the ones which are positioned in the middle. If not, the composition might look too busy. 
Now I'm going to go back to the large leaf. I feel like I want to increase the value for part of the leaf directly behind the grapes so I can separate those two elements. I use a thin to medium consistency of the same dark green mix to glaze over those areas of the leaf. Then once I get closer to the edges, I use a clean damp brush to soften the edges so the glaze will look more like a transparent gradient. I actually finished off this painting after the previous step, but as I was editing this video, I looked back at it again and I think it was really lacking some shine. So I decided to go back in with bleed proof white to add on the light highlights. This is actually days or even weeks away from the initial painting, so my nails are a completely different color. But anyway, I basically just use a very thin consistency of bleed proof white to paint on the highlights on the sides and center of the grapes, depending on where they're positioned since I want the white to be quite transparent. You can also use zinc white gouache for this if you want so you don't have to water it down as much since bleed proof white is very opaque. Once I have a light layer of the white highlight, sometimes I like to go back in with a slightly less transparent or a bit more opaque white and add on extra dots on top of those soft highlights for an extra shine. As you can see, I don't want the highlights to be too strong and once I'm quite happy with how I've placed the highlights, I like to also use a thin consistency of this bleed proof white to outline some of the edges to clean the shapes up and also add some white specks here and there for a discoloration or a bit of imperfection for some of the grapes. After this step, it's pretty much done. This was my first time painting grapes. I was quite intimidated at the beginning, but I learned a few things from this. And I hope this was enjoyable for you guys to watch and follow along to. Like usual, all the list of tools I use for this painting, as well as my social media links, including the link to this outline will be listed in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!